Good morning, good morning, good morning, new song. We're ready to worship this morning. We are a week away from Christmas, and so we're just up here just excited, okay? <laughs> Let us join together for this time of worship. Dear Lord, thank you, God, for all that you've done. We ask that you just have your way, Lord God. Be in our worship. Be with us, Lord God. Let us worship freely in your presence. Amen, amen. song we're singing today is our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other
impossible for him. He's so awesome. He's so mighty. He's greater than your biggest worry. He's greater than anything. He's greater than anything. Yes. We serve such an awesome God. We serve such a mighty God. For a couple of minutes, for a couple of seconds, this is your time to worship. We worship together, and we're just acknowledging our great God. We say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for being there for us. Thank you, God, for even if this time of, of holiday season is, 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 um, is, isn't as joyous as we would like for it to be because um, of loss of family members or loss of family you're not even at or at odds with family members Lord God we say thank you for being greater than that Lord God thank you for standing in the gap and, and covering us Lord even in that we say thank you that Christmas and, and all of these holidays sometimes are, are great and joyous but for some of us it's not and it's a reminder so Lord we ask for those that are de that are in need if there's anyone in here in need in need of God in need of just his comfort for this season he's here and he wants to comfort you he wants to be all that you need and I really just feel feel him saying that I'm here I have you I will carry you through I will carry you through your finals I will carry you through the, the thing that you're worried about I have you because I'm greater so if we can just all sing the chorus just all together now one more time we sing our God is great yeah Stronger, our God, yeah. It, it takes us having to actually say it out of our mouths. Yeah, yeah, our God. Can we all do it one more time? Sing, Our God is great, He is strong. We sing, our God is healing, our God is healing, our God is healing, our God is healing. We sing, our God is healing, yes. Our God is healing, our God is healing. He's a healer. He's a keep. He's a way maker. Oh, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healing. Awesome and power, our God, our God. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being everything we need. Oh, come, let us adore him. We adore you. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, God, for your peace. We sing to you this morning. We sing to you. Mm Joyful and triumphant, oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Sing, come and be hold Oh, come, let 
adore him, Christ the Lord. Can we all sing that together? Oh, come all ye faith. We sing joy for Receive our worship. Oh. 
It's all pleasing unto him. He wants to hear your voice, yeah. He wants to hear your audible worship. As long as there's breath in your body, worship. is stripped away when my own voice is stripped away here's my worship still here's my worship here's my worship here it is here it is he's looking for an offering what will you offer to the king? Will you give him your heart? Will you give him your mind? He's looking for an offering. Will you make room for him today? Make room for him. say thank you for this moment. Thank you, Lord, that you've spoken already that there's something that you want from us. There's something that you need an offering. Something that we give of ourselves today, Lord God. Whether if it's reconnecting with you, re reigniting the fire for you, Lord God. Or if it's something we've never even done before. There's something that you're asking. There's more that you're asking of us, more than just showing up here. And so we say, here we are, Lord. May you download that to each and every single one of us. We want to make you smile. We want our worship to be pleasing to you, Lord. Take joy. Make it your dwelling place. We say thank you, Lord, and as we move forward from this time of worship, that we're not moving from your presence. Open up our, our heart and our mind and our ears to see you. <laughs> to see you in the role of the clips, to see you in the announcements, to see you in the word and in the message. The word is not dead, it's alive, so Lord, may you jump out at us. As the word is being read, we thank you, and we say, in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
freaking new song? Morning. Wasn't that such an awesome time of worship? <sighs> you know, you guys, I just, I'm still filled with the, the presence of the Lord, you know? Just the idea of, you know, a week away from Christmas. I know you got stuff to do. I know you're finishing up with school. I know you got family coming in. I know you're traveling. And I know that you enjoy worshiping the Lord. And sometimes that gets lost during this season. Amen. You out shopping and, and doing what you need to do. But this pure moment of worship, I just invite everyone in person and online to take some time out during this week. Oh, Lord, what you doing? <laughs> That's the sign, y'all. Take some time out during this week to give the Lord your, your worship. I promise you, I promise you, he will receive it with open arms. You may not have gold and frankincense and mirror and, and whatever else the magi gave him, but you have your worship. Amen. Read over the, in Luke, read over the account and consider this week giving the Lord your worship, your best worship, whether it's off key, in key, a cappella, with drums or not, with your family, your friends, your co workers, give them your worship this season. Amen. Amen. So, welcome everybody. I'm Stephanie. Sorry for my little sermonette, Dan. You know, I like you. Dan likes to take the mic away from me, Pastor Dan. No, just kidding. <laughs> just a warm up, just warm up for the, the main meet today. <laughs> welcome to New Song online in person. We're glad you're here. I know I see some first time visitors. We know because you got the red name tag. I just busted our system. Welcome, welcome. We're glad you're here and we hope that you'll return and visit us again. Just a couple quick announcements. Um, we are having uh, a Christmas Eve and a Christmas Day service. So for those of you who may be wondering, I know it, it sometimes it's weird when Christmas falls on a Sunday. Everybody's like, do I have to go? You know, <laughs> Christmas PJs are welcome <laughs> per our uh, sign. So our service Christmas Eve is at 7 o'clock right here. Pastor Dan will be preaching. I think we have a, a string quartet, not a string quartet. What are the horns called? Brass, brass coming, you guys, and we'll have candle lighting of some sort. Um, so it'll be great. So bring, if you have family out of town, come on, bring them in. And just before the busyness starts, just come and take a minute and enjoy a pre-Christmas service on Christmas Eve. And then Sunday, we'll have our usual service at 10 a.m. right here. And we will also be streaming it. But if you want to come with your PJs after you open your gifts and stuff, Come on down. We're, we're, we'll be glad to receive you and worship with you. Um, and also, just a couple of uh, brief announcements, uh, just admin stuff. If this is your first time with us, we'd be grateful if you would look behind the chairs. There's an, a Connect card, and you can uh, fill out your information, and we can stay in touch with you. And also, if you want to update your information, we can have that um, as well. And I think... That is it. I'm just excited to worship with you guys before Christmas. My family's coming in town. The Eagles are playing today. There's just a lot going on, y'all. So we're just glad that you're here with us. And also, just a quick reminder, we do have an app, the new song, L-A, in L-A app. Download it. Pastor Dan has some awesome podcasts with members of the congregation talking about their faith journey, which you may find encouraging right, during the season. I just want to acknowledge it's the season is tough for some people. Those of you recently lost loved ones or facing some difficulties, don't go it alone. You know, there's a family and there's a community here. So talk to us. You know, you can email e uh, info at newsongla.net. Just touch base. Find me. I'm wearing red today, you know. And so we just want to make sure that everyone knows you are loved and cared for during this season, which is not always so joyous for everyone. Amen? Amen. So that's my spiel. My name is Stephanie, by the way, and um, welcome to the service. I'll bring Pastor Dan up.
I don't know if you've ever had that experience in the middle of the night where you lie down in bed and it's dark. And the thoughts that kind of come in and out of your head, chaotic, strange, and it matches the mood of the night, it's dark. That happens to me sometimes, where I sit there or lie there in a dark space and in a dark place, where dark thoughts fill my mind. I don't generally struggle with the idea of self-worth, but sometimes I wonder, what's all this for? Why is everything so messed up? There are times when life hurts so much and you want to stay in the darkness. You want to hide in the darkness. You want to feel as if that's a safe place because it, it becomes comfortable after a while. It becomes comforting. It's frightening to know that I might need to step out of the darkness. As I've shared with you as a church more than once, I'm a person that has struggled with a lifelong um, journey with anxiety and depression. And there are seasons of life when it feels like the darkness is crowding around me. It's closing in on me. Sometimes it feels like the darkness is like chaos. It's like pain. And it never ever makes sense, right? Because we know better. We know that life isn't usually as bad as I might feel in my darkest moments, yet the chaos of the moment, or even the chaos of the world, it feels as if I cannot make sense of it. For those of you that don't struggle with this kind of thing, you probably know somebody that does. And you've watched them sit in the chair in the dark, whether literally or figuratively, wondering when they're going to get up, when they're going to experience something else, and when it is that the light is going to shine into their lives. When light begins to shine in the darkness, it's hard to ignore. When I light the match, there's a flash of light, and our eyes have become adjusted to the darkness. And it catches us off, off, off guard, as if like, whoa, wait, what was that? Like we don't understand or we can't make sense of what is happening, that things begin to be brightened, and we begin to see more clearly. But even when we begin to see more clearly, it doesn't always seem to make sense because it's like now there's so many more inputs and I feel overwhelmed and I want to retreat back into the darkness. And it feels comfortable, feels safe, even if we know it's not good for us. This Advent season, this Christmas season, we're thinking about what it means to make room for Jesus. To not say that I want to just hide in the darkness, because the truth is when the light comes in, the darkness needs to make room for it. It cannot stay there. The darkness has to make room for it by the nature of what it is. Today, we are going to be looking in a passage 
in John chapter 1. A more philosophical approach to the beginning of the Christmas story of Jesus' arrival. And today we're going to hear about how light breaks through into the darkness and dispels the chaos that's found in there. Let's pray as we jump in. God, we thank you so much that even when it is dark, your light finds a way to break through. God, we thank you so much that your love for us is never ending. Thank you that you did not leave us in the darkness, so to speak, but you rescued us. You came into the darkness as we will read in your scripture. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that we can trust in that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to begin to read from John chapter 1. We're going to be looking in verses five, 1 through 5. If you have Bibles, you're welcome to turn there. If you have your phone, you can turn there as well. Unfortunately, as you may be able to tell, our, we've had some issues technically today. Those of you who are at home, you're probably watching this not live right now because the internet went out here at our facility, and so many of our things are tied to the internet. Um, but we invite you to follow along. I'm going to read for us in John chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. And that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Light, light challenges the chaos. And why do I say that? You see, in the beginning of John chapter 1, John uses this word that we translate as word. Philosophically, in those days, in the Greco-Roman Empire, that word, word, refers to reason, like logic, that there was some sort of way that in the midst of a crazy world that things actually made sense, that there was an actual order to things, that even though in the darkness it feels chaotic, that there was truth behind all of the veil of shadows, that even if we couldn't make sense of it, surely there was something there that was bright, that was true, that was real, that made sense, that was a world full of color and not just shadows and confusion. You see, in the Greco-Roman Empire, especially in the days of Jesus, it's not that dissimilar to what we experience today, in that it was a world that had quite a bit of wealth, in the Roman Empire at least, for those who were privileged within the empire, not necessarily for the conquered peoples, like the people of Israel, but for Rome. And in the philosophy of that day, things became a little bit You know, like, people would ask the question, like, what's all this for? So much of Greco-Roman society had kind of devolved into this hedonism where all we were pursuing in life was our pleasures, the things that we just wanted, because they had access, they had wealth. They could spend their time obsessing over what they were going to eat, and what they were going to wear and where they were going to go bathe and what they were going to experience, the kind of salves and lotions that they could buy. That's not that different from today. Something happens when a society becomes wealthy. 
we begin to chase those things, the material things, just like in those days. And there's this sense of like malaise that had begun to creep into the Roman Empire. Some would call some of that part of the fall of the Roman Empire eventually because people just kind of went like, what's all this for anyway? Why are we conquering all these people? Where is this going to get us? This idea that it felt like nothing really mattered and nothing ever made sense. It was that chaotic sense of the world that there was no rhyme or reason. And in the midst of that, there's this idea of word, of logic, of reason, that there's something behind it all. And so John here, the author of this account of Jesus' arrival, employs this idea to say, in the beginning was the word. Before everything else went crazy and nuts, there was a plan and reason behind it all. And that reason, that core reality was with God and was God and was with God in the beginning. That's a shocking word for people hearing it in those days. You're like, wait, this is all, this actually all means something? We can ask that same question today, can't we? It actually all means something. Light also reveals truth. It challenges the chaos, right? Because when we begin to see more clearly, we begin to make sense of things, but also the things that were hidden behind shrouds are revealed. There's something freeing, even if it's scary, about when people begin to see you for who you really are. Now, we might build all kinds of scaffolding to prevent that from happening. But it's like we're trying to hide behind a shadow. We don't, want a pe- we don't want people to really see the blemishes that are on our face. People say, everybody looks good in the dark, right? I probably look better right now. <laughs> we look better in the dark because we're hiding. But when the light comes on and we begin to see more clearly, the truth is revealed. What is really there is what we begin to see. And that matters, friends, because the light shines in the darkness and we are freed from the darkness as a result of that. It's not just that we have to like, have to make sense of the world and the chaos that's there, but there's truth behind it. There's a realness behind what we see when the light is given space to expand and grow. There have been times, again, as I've mentioned, that I've not wanted that in my life even because it's more comfortable to just lie in bed. It's more comfortable to just not deal, to avoid the issues to run away from them, to hide from what's really out there, to hide from the overwhelming feelings and experiences that are there, to hide from difficulties at work, to hide from difficulties within my family, to hide from how I'm feeling physically when I'm aching and I'm feeling like I'm getting older. We don't like that feeling. And I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to think about it. I just, want to, I just want things to just be as they always were. But that is not a truthful way to live. Life goes on. Things happen. Life is challenging. Life is hard. But it does no good to hide from it. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. There's no way that the darkness can overcome light. Have you ever been in in a room that was really dark and you shined a flashlight and, I mean, if there's no batteries, that's one thing, but if you turn it on and there was actually batteries in the thing, it actually, I mean, there's no way that the room would not light up, right? Because the darkness has no ability to snuff out, the darkness has no ability to snuff out the light. It cannot do it by the nature of what it is. And so the truth is revealed when the light shines. This is one of the things that John is pointing to here in this passage, that something is happening here 
The world was in darkness. The world was confused, was hiding behind a shadow. And there had to be something that broke into that space and said, aha, here is what's really going on. Here I will show you exactly what this life is all about. Here in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, John says, this was life. The word was life, and that life was the light of all humankind, right? Life. What does light have to do with life? It feels like John's just jumping from one metaphor to another, right? Oh, there's word, then there's life, and then there's light, and it just keeps on jumping around. But these things hold together when we think about the way that the people in the Greco-Roman world were thinking about things. What's the meaninglessness of life? The purposelessness of life. When all we have to do is pursue our material pleasures and joys, at some point you get tired of it, and you just sit there, and you ponder, why? Jesus comes in and shows that, no, 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 Life is more than that. Life is more than the things that our culture, our society, their culture and their society and their day was trying to push them to consider as what was meaningful and important. There was more because God was coming to show the way to what it really meant to live life to the fullest. You see, when we crowd our lives with these other things, like the things we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, like our material gain. We crowd our lives with the other things that we pursue. It's like you're in a crowded closet and there's no space to move. And even if you turn the light on, the light switch in there, you still couldn't see anything because there's too much stuff in there. And we tend to do that even in these holiday times, right? We crowd the space and the light gets crowded out. But if the light shines, if it's really good light, it's going to find ways to creak around the corner right? The light is going to find a way and show us what life should be and what life could be in Jesus. I strongly believe in the value of therapy for those that struggle with depression and anxiety. But a resource that's been helpful for me is to be able to hold on to my faith to hold on to what I know to be true, to hold on to the rea- what I believe is a God that has ordered things out of the chaos in a way that makes sense to God, even if it doesn't make sense to me, and that I can trust in that. And when I begin to trust in that, in those dark places, it feels like I can live because when we hide in the darkness and you're in that dark place and you're struggling with dark thoughts, it, you, may, you wonder, like, is this a life worth living like this? There's more. There's better. Right? Because God reveals that to us and shows us what that light can be like. What that light can be like when we begin to see with brightness the joy that is there in life, and you begin to see the things that are there that you might have gla- glossed over in the past. Sometimes, I'm going to admit, my, I've got, you know, I got my own kids in this room. You know, you're hearing this from me. There's been times when I, you know, I sit there in my life, and I just, you know, life is just bleh. And I just want to hot sit there on the couch and be like, oh, this is terrible. I don't want to go through this. Like, why am I having to keep going through this life? It's uh, so painful. And I'm in that dark place. And really, it's not, I mean, it is kind of funny when I talk about it this way. But it's not funny in the moment, right? It hurts. And then something clicks in my head and I see the joy on my kids' faces when they run up to me because they want some attention and they want to play. Teenagers don't do that anymore. Right, but they did when they were little. And when I am not in a really, I'm really not in a good place and I'm shrouded as if there's a shadow cast over me, sometimes I don't even see that. But when I let the light in and I embrace that light, there is a joy immeasurable 
when you see the smiles of our children's faces coming to you in that moment when they have something they want to share. That's like light shining in the darkness when Jesus enters into the world and says, look, it's not all darkness, friends. There's something better. There is a way forward in the darkness. There's a way forward in the chaos. And hey, let's face it. Our world is a little bit chaotic, right? Even this morning, some of you, you know, some of you were a little late because you were busy watching the penalty shootout. It's kind of a chaotic environment. There's so many different ways that it could feel crazy and chaotic in the moment, right? There's so many things in life. And that's just, you know, that's a celebratory event for some anyway. And it is something that people can get excited about. And we know we don't take, well, I mean, some of us anyway, don't take it too seriously. But we also know that there's other things in life that we take very seriously and for good reason. And there's chaos all around it. We think about the wars that are taking place. And I know we've got certain ones that take most of the space in the news. And we don't spend as much time on some of the other ones, right? For example, we definitely still hear about the war between Russia and Ukraine. But that's not the only war that's taking place out there. There are conflicts and skirmishes all over the place. There's a continuing civil war in Yemen that's been going on for way too long. There's conflicts still brewing in Ethiopia. There are conflicts all around the world. Recently, there was a military clash between India and China. Anybody really want to see that thing blow up? Nope. Even in our country, there's clashes all the time, differences of political opinion, differences of different social and cultural views. In the church, there is conflict. There are conflicts between those that want to see the church insert itself into government in a more serious way. And there's others that say, come on now, slow down. Like, that's not how we do things here. There's conflicts, there's strife, there's confusion and chaos all around. How do we make sense of that? How do we pursue God together? I think one of the things that we do, and this may be a little abstract, I admit, but John's a little abstract. We hold on to this idea that there was and there is a God that entered into the darkness and shone a light into it, and our job on the receiving end is to open our eyes and to embrace it and to say, yes, I don't know where this is going to lead, but I can trust that light will win because light has to win. The darkness has not overcome it. So even though the light comes into the world and the world did not understand it, and the world is struggling to figure out what that is, we are invited to say yes to bringing that light and embracing that light in our own lives. Now, what that means for you and I may differ depending on kind of where you are in life. And I want to just break that down into a couple of different ways for you, all right? First, I want to say a word for those of you who are struggling. That maybe the way I described some of my own experience is something that you resonate with. S whether it's you resonate with it now or you've resonated with it at some time in your life that feeling of being alone, even though you got people in the house, that feeling of the shadows kind of creeping in on you and crowding over you. If you're in that place, I invite you to just even visually imagine yourself in a dark room and then a candle being lit. as a reminder that the Holy Spirit is with you in your place of grief and confusion. Sometimes our imaginations are helpful in this way. I mean, and people say, oh, we're just kind of making stuff up. No. John was using imaginative language here in this passage, and so we use that too. Think about the light shining in that dark place, bringing light into your life. You might be in a dark room and you might take a candle and huddle around it because you're not ready to light the other candles yet. But imagine that space and know that the light shines in the darkness. And there is no way, no way in the world 
simple physics, right? Is it physics? Light, darkness, right? There's no way that the darkness can win. Think about that for a second again. There is no way, amen? There is no way that the darkness can win. And even when you look at the chaotic world and you think, it looks like the darkness is winning, we put our trust in a God who said, I love this world so much that even if they fight with each other and even when some people oppress others and create systems that oppress others, I still love this world enough to come into the darkness and shine my light there and show you guys the better way, right? This is what we believe. This is what we celebrate in Christmas, in Advent, that Jesus said, okay, darkness, it's time to go. It is time to go. Okay, now God's timeline is a little different from ours, and we think, okay, it's time to go. Now it's been 2,000 years. Like, you, some of us might feel like, okay, God, <laughs> we know you said that. Come on now. But we still trust because we see little signs. We see moments where God shows us that God is still working and that light is still shining, that even in dark places, God is still shining through. We hear that in stories like some of our ministry partners, like El, at El Pozo de Vida, in a very difficult, dark place where human trafficking is rampant. Still, there are stories of light shining through, Jesus connecting with people, rescuing women from abusive and horrible situations. Even in the midst of war, we hear stories, small ones, that remind us that God still cares. If you are a person maybe who isn't experiencing a really dark situation, I want to encourage you in a different direction. What would it look like for you to be as a light in a dark place? Jesus would later on go on to say, you, right, like are we are, you're, you're following after me and I am the light of the world. We are like light, like Jesus. Don't, if you have a light, don't stick it under a bushel or whatever that is, right? A lamp, you go hide it under a bowl. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Surely you know people or you know situations where it feels like the darkness is closing in. Whether it be in your household, in your family, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, How can you be a light in those places? How can you come alongside someone who is really struggling and say, hey, let me help you light that candle? This Christmas season, even though daylight savings and you know, weather makes it dark longer and we feel the darkness and we feel the cold and we want to huddle up in the dark places, how are you going to experience God's light shining in to those dark places? Because we all got them. We know people that do. Jesus came into, on Christmas Day to bring light into the world to shine his light into our darkness. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you that you love us so deeply, that you did not leave us in our darkness to wallow there and hide forever, but you shone your light. I thank you that I have experienced that in my own life, in my own journey. I thank you, God, that you did not leave this world alone. That the Christmas story is not just a story about a baby in a manger and not just a story about shepherds tending their flock and seeing angels. But it's a story about light coming into a dark world. And God, you know we need it. Lord, I pray specifically for those in this space who are struggling. Maybe those who are going to be watching online in a little bit. Maybe who are huddled at home. 
Heavenly Father, would you shine your light in those dark places? And God, I pray that we would make room. We wouldn't try to snuff it out. That we would make room for your light to shine in us. Lord, for those of us who are around others who might be going through a difficult time, Lord, teach us, show us what we can do to shine your light of love and grace and embrace so that our friends, our family, may know the joy of stepping into the light, not hiding and knowing that there is a God that makes sense out of the chaos. Lord, we thank you so much again for your wonderful love that brings light to the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. We're going to enter this time of giving as well. Um, and as we're in the season of giving, let us give to God first um, and know that Whatever you seed here, whatever whatever you sow here, that it's good ground. Um, so we're gonna. There's gonna be a bag that's gonna be passing around. Let's just follow directions of the people that are helping with that. Um, and we're gonna continue with one last worship song. Even when I lay down every burden, every cloud, this is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to do. To do whatever you
feels like you're up against a dragon of darkness that hovers over you, right? Sometimes you feel like that. That's the experience that we have, and it helps me. I, look, I'm, I love being imaginative. In my dark spaces, sometimes I just have to imagine that Jesus is there like the knight in shining armor ready to slay that dragon for me right? We experience that through Jesus when we say we're going to trust that God can do that. And I know some of you are feeling like, you know what, I've been there and I've trusted and I'm still waiting, right? The only thing I can say to you is keep on trusting. Keep turning to Jesus. I believe and I have faith that God will meet you in that space. Amen? Amen. Just a couple of things as we close. If you are new with us today, we would invite you to just stick around for about 10 minutes. We have what we call our 10-minute after party. We just kind of circle a couple of chairs over by the green screen, and we get to know each other a little bit. I'd love to kind of hear a little bit about your story, about who you are and how you came, and you could ask questions about us as you are checking out our church today. Um, also, invite you to consider um, coming to our house on the second Sunday of each month. So the next one's going to be on in January, January 8th. Um, and you can sign up for a dinner. You don't have to bring anything. You know, we have people in our church who are graciously providing the meal. And if you'd like to sign up for that, you can. there's a sheet outside in the lobby or you can sign up online as well. It's just a time for us to sit together, to get to know each other a little bit better and for you to ask questions about the church, about who we are and whether or not this is a church community that you want to put down roots in. This is going to be an interesting week. Those of you who are parents, your kids are out of school. Some of you are traveling. you got all kinds of things going on, families coming in town. It could be a really chaotic time. But let's remember that in the midst of that, Jesus came, that we might have life 
and have it abundantly. Amen? Let's close in prayer. God, we thank you so much that you have come to shine light in those dark places. Lord, would you shine in us and through us so that this holiday season, people may know the reconciling love and grace that we have in you, Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.